Miss Nichols, back in the house, back in the house, back in the house. We're still with Puppy Linux 8. And I'm going to be answering a few questions some people have left, okay? Okay, this one is from Mr. Denpes. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Well, I'll put it up on the screen if I can remember to, but hey, here we go. Did you install this on a fat partition? No, it was on a diet. No, of course it didn't. It was an EXT4 partition, okay? The whole drive is the EXT4, EXT4 okay? You'll see if I open here, when I installed it, <clears throat> when you come to the end of the save section, it asks you if you want to install it on a whole drive or into a folder. Now I've done it into a folder for the simple reason I've backed it up, okay? So if something goes bang, I've still got everything there and I can just go from there. Just makes it easier. You can do it the other way if you want to. It's entirely up to you. If I open, if I go down here, and we should be, where are we, where are we? Blah, 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 system. Departed, and you can see as you can see, there's only one drive here, and that's an old, weldy, spinny, disky. Okay, there's nothing else connected to the system. We click on OK, and as you can see, I've got some Linux, what 3.26 gig. Okay, and the whole other one is here, ext4 only, and it's my boot drive. Okay, so that's how it works nice and easy. If I open up here, as you can see, all my other stuff is here. And here's the actual video of me recording at the moment. But my music folder up there, the music I've transferred over so far is all in there. It all works fine. Super duper. So that's the first question from Mr. Denpes. That was quite a few questions he had all in one, didn't he? Okay. All in one. Remember, there is several ways to install Puppy. But we'll go for a couple of them in a second. All right. okay. So, next. <clears throat> this is a load of questions. And Serge has answered some in the comments anyway. But I thought I'll answer them in the video as well, while we're here, okay? So, Devo Ochol, yeah, all right, okay, even if I said that right. One, is the installation easy for beginners? All depends how much of a beginner you are. It can be as easy as you want, but you will have to partition your drive first, okay? It won't partition your drive for you. So as I just did just then, if you're going to G parted, while you've got your disc or your USB st stick stuck in the machine, you to go to OK, and you'll have to partition your hard drive, which would be SDA. Okay, you'll have to partition the bat. Do you get me? Of course you do. I always give yourself some swap if it's an old machine. If it's a new machine, and you've got 16 gig of RAM, up to you if you want to swap at all. It's entirely up to you. But it will give you the option on some methods of installation if you want swap. But I always create it when using Gparted. We've all done videos on Gparted, so I'm not going to do another one just yet. If I really have to, I will, but I'm not doing it at the moment. So, that's part of number one out of the way. But if you want to install it, easiest way is to go to install, universal installer, show them where you want to install it to. So I would go here to an internal hard drive. You click on there. It's found one already, but I'm not going to go any further because then I'd ruin my drive, wouldn't I? Okay. And it'll walk through with you all the processes you need to do okay so we'll quit that after you've done that whatever way you install it remember there's the easy way of just actually copying and pasting the whole stuff over to the drive whatever one floats your boat at the end of the day there's loads and loads of ways of doing it but anyway yeah moving on after you do install it you will need to put a bootloader in okay so here it would be either a grub for dos or the legacy grub configuring okay simple as that that's all you have to do nothing else and it will do it for you. We've all done videos on it loads and loads of times. So that's installation. Serge says it's not easy. I don't. I think it's quite easy, really, if you can read. If you can't read, get somebody who can read to do it for you. His second question: How does one install codecs and proprietary drivers like the Nvidia drivers? Well, I actually showed you this in the last video. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down to Quick Pet here. We got some drivers. I just click there. It will download and install them for you. No questions asked. If you want other drivers, you will have to go here and I'll show you. Go to install again, but here go to install applications. Go to the puppy package manager. Pa, 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 pa. And you want uh, NVIDIA, okay? So if I type in NVIDIA, and it will come up with all the NVIDIA stuff, okay? If I go down to the bottom, as you can see, the 410 ones installed for me. Super duper. There's Bumblebee and Primus here as well, and the Boink Client, you know, anything else you want, you can install them that way as well. But remember, they don't always work, okay? So, 
keep testing, keep testing. Lucky enough, it only takes seconds to install, or a couple of minutes. It's not long at all, so you're not wasting too much time, like you would if you were just installing Windows, which takes forever. Okay, and update it. And he's got a third question. In the video, my eyesight is poor, he says. I seem to see 800 megabytes of memory being used. Well, I'm recording at the same time, so that's 869 at the moment. That's 1080p, okay? If you was recording at 1080 it would probably use around 940. If you was recording, ooh, if you really, really had to, there's no point of doing 2K, as they call it, which is 1440 by something. It'd be using over a gig. If you was recording at 4K, you'd need at least 4 gig of memory. Mm -hmm. If you was recording at it. I'm not saying transcoding, I'm saying recording. Okay, It will use an awful lot of memory. And your CPU will be going bonkers anyway. Trust me, I do 4K stuff. Yeah, This ain't going to cut it. No way. Not the machine it's on. Obviously, if I put it on the 8-core or the 16-core, no problem. Let's give that a go, won't I, see? Anyway, that's that one out of the way. And his fourth question is, does Wi-Fi work out of the box? All depending on your dongle. Now, but the dongle I've got plugged in here is from the, the Pi Hut. So it's specified for a Raspberry Pi. It does the speeds I want, and it's £5.20. Something stupid like that. The really, next day delivery is free. Skimples. Yeah, okay. And finally, and God, oh, five questions, Dave, or Divo, whatever the name is. How did you replace Abbey Word and G Numeric? Well, I showed you this in the video, and obviously you wasn't watching very properly, was you? I'm not okay about that. You go to the JWN Quark uh, desk manager. I'll just open it up for you so you can see first before we do anything else. Then I'm going to open up Quick Pet for you. Okay. We go to Office. All you do is click on LibreOffice. I'm going to click on it for you now. Now these large, large, large things are stored as SFS files, okay? So you can have LibreOffice, OpenOffice, WPS, Kodi, Caden Live and VLC, Java, FreeCAD, all SFS files. And they are stored and only loaded when you need them, okay? Yeah? So all you would do there is choose what you wanted to, click OK, at the end of the download, it will ask you if you want to mount that file, and you say yes. Okay. Simple as that. Then we'll cancel that and cancel that. Then after that, we go to default apps, <clears throat> and we go to here, we go to document, okay? Just so you can see, so watch very carefully, okay? For my spreadsheet, I've specified LibreOffice 6.1 calc, whereas before, it was Numeric. You get me? Of course. For my word processor, I've gone over to Writer. Whereas before, it was Abbey Word. Yeah? Simple as that. So if I click on Writer and Calc, just wait there. I have a sip of drink while I'm waiting. Ram users ain't going like that. Well, here we go. 920, 927. Mm, got two lots loading at the same time. Don't even mind the CPU's ancient, so I ain't too worried. So there's Writer. All ready to rock and roll. You will need to install some more fonts, though. There's not enough fonts. Not for me. And there's Calc. All done. Okay? So I hope that answers all them questions on that one. What else we got here? Blah, 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 blah. There was a couple of others, but I'm not going to do any more, because that's enough. Oh, here's, here's one. From Peanut Butter Jellyfish Sandwich. He wondered how it would run with a discrete GPU since his VIA S3 integrated GPU is unlikely to be supported. Well, you never know. It's one way to find out, isn't it? Install it and give it a go. But I would imagine a discrete one, like an older air-cooled NVIDIA card or AMD card, would work just fine. Trust me, it would just work just fine. Well, I think that's enough questions answered on this short video. Sneaking in the next I says, bye-bye.